Hello, hello, hello. It's Deborah Francis White and this is the new normal. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Well, I'm excited to begin when a few people have tuned in. Here we go. Here they come. Some of you tuned in earlier because you saw we'd gone live early and you thought, what? We're just doing a technical run with Juliet Stevenson to make sure it all worked because her internet has gone down. So she's forging it up right nice. Yes, that's right. Today, my guest on The New Normal is literally Juliet Stevenson. I'm Deborah Francis White. Welcome to The New Normal. Let's see if Juliet is there. Here we go. She's not there yet, but I feel fairly strongly she's going to pop up at any moment. In the meantime, the program is, as always, sponsored by Diet Coke. They don't know that yet, but I'm, but I am actually drinking a lot of Diet Coke to get me through the quarantine. And I feel if they gave me ten thousand pounds, feminists everywhere would think that was pretty cool. And so, you know, that that's a drop in the ocean for them. I'm hoping someone who works for Diet Coke will show them this. And they will, as a joke, give me £10,000. That's my deep hope for this show. Hold on. Let's see if Juliet's there now. Not there yet. But I'm fairly sure she's going to pop up at any moment. Uh, at any point, Diet Coke, if you want to give me £10,000 as a joke, because it would make a great news story, they'd be like, oh, she just had this Instagram live show. And uh, but and, and she talked about Diet Coke and... Um, uh, and and loads of feminists are being fueled on Diet Coke at the moment. And she kept saying she wanted £10,000. They just went, Do you know what? That's fine. That's fine. It's a quarantine. We'll give her £10,000 to fund her show. I feel like that's going to happen any minute now. Let's just see if Juliet's there on my go live with function. No Juliet Stevenson yet. Uh, but I have a very good feeling that she's going to pop up as we did our tech run at half past five. Um, uh, simply nude bars as well. Is it simply nude? My simply nude bars. Uh, I'm just looking over at them. I'm also hoping that they sponsor me, but they don't have the kind of money that Diet Coke has. So I would settle for a free box of simply nude bars, to be honest. Um, yeah, it's a joke as a joke. Give me 10,000 pounds as a joke, please. Diet Coke. I mean, for, for Diet Coke, that is like me finding 20 P down the side of this chair and going, do you want it? It's, it's, it's no more than a 20p back of the chair find for Diet Coke. Let's see if Juliet's there now. Let's see. Let's see. Nope, no Juliet. Ah, oh, here she is. I'm adding Juliet. Four, three. Okay. <gasps> it's literally Juliet Stevenson. Hello, 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 and welcome to the new normal. How exciting to have you on. I'm so excited to be on. This is my very, this is my virgin, um, my virgin arrival on, on Instagram Live. I've never done it before. Wow. You're clearly trying to get a sponsorship from Virgin. I've just been trying to get sponsorship from Diet Coke. I mention them every day. I say it's sponsored by Diet Coke. I drink a Diet Coke through the show. And I'm hoping that as a joke, they'll give me £10,000. <laughs> I mean, this is, we've got to hustle now. You never saw me doing this in the old days, did you? Yes, I was we dignified. Did. You no, were never dignified. I was so dignified. I, all I did was take a reasonable ticket price for a show. I never once sought a sponsor. <laughs> now, my whole life is just like, yep, yeah, I'll, 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 I'll take a sponsor. I'll absolutely take a sponsor. Anything you want me to advertise, Juliet, I'm there. I'm right there. Okay, I'll take you up on that. Okay, I, I appreciate that. Do you have a sponsor through the quarantine? You're doing lots of... Lots of wonderful things. No, but I'm looking for loads of sponsors because um, I, I, I don't know about everybody else, but I am quarantining. Well, I'm out, I'm out in the country. We're in East Anglia because my husband is very immune compromised. So he and has asthma. And so he has to stay right away from coronavirus. So quite early on, we came up here. And so we're in the middle of the countryside. And I started to go completely bonkers, not being in the thick of it. I realized that... Mm -hmm. When stuff's going on, you know, we talked about You want to be forever. there, heart of the action. I really, really want to be there. And, and actually, I go a bit, I, I mean, I realised, I've, I've learned a lot. I'm sure, I don't know how anybody else listening or watching this has found this, but I think I'm learning quite a lot about myself and 
relationships in this period. And I suppose it's because we don't have our usual structures and systems. Mm. And when you take all our usual structures and systems away, you're very much sort of up against yourself. And you think, oh, hello, I appear not to be somebody who's capable of creating my own daily schedule. Oh, that's a bit embarrassing. Or, you know, <laughs> um, I'm not quite as disciplined as I thought. What's all this getting up at 11 a.m.? Anyway, so... Um, so I've had to really, really work on that. But um, one of the things I've discovered about myself is that I just can't bear not being in the middle of all that amazing community stuff, you know, going around, mm. taking food to the elderly or to the marginalized or the lonely, all those. I mean, I really want to be in amongst a team of people mm. doing that. And I can't be. So then I just got on, got, got going online, you know, and just been doing lots of fundraising for the refugee charities I support and who they really, really are up against it. I mean, people who don't have any homes anyway. So the concept mm -hmm. of, you know, stay safe, stay home when you don't have a home to stay safe in. Um, so I, I have been doing that, but that's meant in turn lots and lots of um, you know, time struggling with internet issues. And, but I'm learning, I'm learning a lot about all that. So that's good. Yes. I mean, we are, we, this 2020 is a year of learning, isn't it? It really is a year of looking in the mirror stopping being forced to look in the mirror the whole world is being forced to look yeah. in a mirror yeah and slow yeah. down and it's so interesting because it's really on a completely personal level on a community level on a global level yeah it really feels like an an a very like a time it's a time you know there's a chinese curse which is may you live in interesting times yes i and feel we do. Oh, we do and i think i mean again i'd love to know what everybody else watching this thinks but I think, you know, instinctively, we all long to get back to the way things were because when things come back to normal or when we get back to the usual way of doing stuff or, and I have this slightly sort of uneasy, but partly uneasy, partly excited feeling that actually we're not going to go back. It's going mm. to go on. We're going on. We're going forward, but it won't quite be the same. And what will that mean? And, and will we have that, you know, will we be able to take what we've learned from this period into the future? Or not. And that's absolutely, as you say, whether that's personally or globally or as a community, mm -hmm. you know, are we going to stay in touch with our neighbours? Are we going to hang on to this community spirit that we found in this time if we did find it? You know, I'm sure people are loving that. You know, I'm hoping there are people all over the country who've never stood and talked to their neighbours on their doorsteps or, mm -hmm. or ever come out of, you know, on a Thursday night at eight o'clock and clapped and sang and banged pots together for something. Mm -hmm. And I'm just mm -hmm. hoping that some of that can can you know thread through into the life we move into when this is all over i you you've 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 you're answering so many of my questions without <laughs> me having to ask them juliet you are you're a wonder you're a wonder um <laughs> do you have any personal coping strategies for emotional or mental stability during because you're in the country as you say you're quite you know you i know you do like the country but you are at heart a city creature, a creature who wants yeah. to be in, as you say, with your community, doing, doing, doing. Uh, have you got any strategies that have worked for you? You don't have to have any. You could just say, no, I'm, I've am um, i got nothing. But no, if you alcohol, have any. Alcohol is working well for me. Alcohol. <laughs> <laughs> um, rec just no, recommend um, kids. Order some wine if you can get it delivered. You know what? I'm a beer girl. I'm a beer girl, actually. I'm a, mm. very cheap, I'm a cheap date. So, um, no, I'm joking apart, although that's not exactly a joke. <laughs> it's not exactly. Do you know, Juliet, I, Tom and I used to be quite smug about, oh, we just don't really drink in the week. We don't think about it. We would drink with friends, but on a Wednesday night, we would never think about it. So many of our friends in London will polish off a bottle of wine at night, but we just don't think about drink. We just don't, we just don't big drinkers. We just don't, Tom and I. We just don't big drinkers. Cut to quarantine. It's like 5.30. I'm like, could you think it's early? Or, I think it's late enough to drink. We could definitely have a drink at six, couldn't we? Definitely have a drink at six. I drink I every did. night. I know. I have exactly. Every I have night. A, I know. I have, a, I have exactly the same response. And the hilarious thing is that I only drink lager, right? Like, you know, it's quite yeah. cheap beer. When I go for my one weekly trip to the supermarket, because it's me who has to do the shopping. I go and of course, by the time I get there, everything's sold out pretty much. So I flog around getting what I can. But then I go to the lager or the beer, you know, section. And I swear to God, the only beer that's not sold out is Corona. I mean, it's just, it's oh hilarious. That people are not buying Corona lager. So I've got a fridge full of Corona lager. Um, the no, but, irony. But to, it's like a sitcom, back, isn't it? I mean, it's, it genuinely is. I don't know if anybody else has found that. But to go back more seriously to your question about coping strategies, because it, it's re last week I had a really bad week. So the first, mm. was it, are we in week four of lockdown? I think we are. Are we in week four? Oh, I feel like week three. I think it's wishful thinking to say week four. I think this is the third week. Is this week the third four. week? 
I think um, there was a week where we sort of locked ourselves down and it wasn't official. We were like right. asked, okay. not maybe, audience maybe who were watching, one. does anyone remember when lockdown, when the full quarantine happened? Just See, dealt, dealt to us. See, time has gone all gooey and melty. It's gone like those, you know, Salvador Dali pictures mm. have melted on the backs of horses. You know, the Dali picture. I, I, I'm definitely finding that my relationship to time is quite strange. And that's probably because we have to create structures and things. But to go back to coping mechanisms, I had a bad week last week. I seemed to just go under and I thought, I'm not proud of myself at all. I was hoping to be one of these sort of really optimistic, you know, vigorous, lively, upbeat people who got through Corona time. Um, mm. And, and positively, but I, I just sank last week. And suddenly, I think it was the, the first couple of weeks, we were all sort of adrenalized in a way, weren't we? Well, oh, well, this is exciting. Mm -hmm. God, we're in a war zone. You know, this is like World mm -hmm. War II. This is like we're all in our bunkers. And, and, and we're all sort of, it was kind of quite, it was frightening, but it was also, um, and there were awful things coming in on the news, but it was also quite adrenalized. And we were all kind of excited and adapting and getting in touch with each other. And all the humor was pouring out onto fantastically funny videos and all that. And then last week, I don't know about you, but it just all sort of sort of started settling into the, the new mm. normal. And then I suddenly got a lot of grief about my, the show that I was about to open in the West End. And I suddenly thought, we may never do that again. And I love the company so much, really love them. And I love the play and it had a lot to say about now. And I was so, so I suddenly felt a bit of grief about that, um, a bit worried about money because we're not, being paid and then um and then missing my kids because we're not all our kids are in different parts of the country you know one's an nhs worker in the hospitals i'm very proud of her one's stuck at home in london in quarantine because he was traveling um so one's a care worker uh, but but we're all in different places so all those sort of um sadnesses started creeping mm. in and i really went a bit under but this week i think i'm back sort of you know Get, got, 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 got to grips with myself and I'm reminding myself all the time how incredibly lucky you are if you a have a home and b if you have access to the outside like we do that you're just so lucky you just better shut up and not complain about anything really uh, well it I, I think it's important though to acknowledge what's happening because it's so uh, Steve Ali who you know who's my sort of family member Syrian refugee who lives with us who's in the country wrote this amazing article for the British GQ, which I, I sent you, didn't I? Yes, yes, yes. yes yeah, uh, yeah. About and we do need to process it and not just go. Oh, I'm fine because we are relatively lucky. You know, I've got a flat that you know. I, I mean, I, I own technically. I mean, the bank owns most of it, to be honest. But they've given us a, sh a short mortgage break. We'll see how we go. Um, but um, you know, uh, I and I and you know, you say you're in the country and therefore you can kind of walk around outside or whatever. Yes, there are there are luckinesses, but it is also a trauma, and we need to acknowledge that it is a trauma. It doesn't it, and Steve always says this. He always says just because your trauma isn't as traumatic as somebody else's trauma doesn't mean it's not trauma. You could you know you could say that about a refugee who's in Calais in a tent in most miserable circumstances. You could say, well, you're not in Syria in the middle of a war zone. You know, it's 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 not very Relative. useful. Yeah, yeah, it's not very useful. We need to just acknowledge it. Um, the, the, the most popular question on this show that we do is, have you had a really low moment? Which I think you've sort of, you've, you've, you've answered because people are live streaming themselves, you know, having fun and doing puppet shadow, you know, shows and, and uh, you know, doing funny things with beer cans, but they're not live streaming their worst moments. Yeah. Of course, we're human, we don't do that. And it's really helped people when we've talked honestly about saying, oh, no, I was really I just suddenly started crying and I didn't know why. Or, um... totally. uh, I mean, I, 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 I actually OK, I mean, I'm really honest. Last week I went really under and I cried a lot every single day. And actually it was when you rang me uh, Thursday and we talked about doing this together and we had that talk and you said it's a bit like really, really bad, you know, PMT. It's like mm -hmm. um, it's, it's really like serious hormonal upset. And I thought, God, yes, because I keep crying i don't know why i'm um, getting angry and irritable i don't know why which is like a sort of really bad version of pmt but i think it is 
I'm just, it's probably true for all of us that there are things, um, you know, we, we know on the, on the one hand, we, we know that we've got to pull together, we've got to be, do mm. this properly, we've got to be strong, we've got to sort ourselves out, we've got to make good use of our time, we've got to, you know, we've got to do all those things and we may, maybe even enjoy that challenge. But there are real sadnesses. I mean, we're all probably missing our friends and our family. I'm missing my kids to bits and my mates. Um, and our energies are all different. You know, what do you, mm. what do, you do with all that just physical energy? If you cooped a whole lot of four-year-old boys in a room or, or kids in a room, mm. you know, they'd, they'd go crazy. You have to let them out. But it's the same, a little bit the same for adults too. We need that outgoing energy and we do need mm. to be dancing or laughing or running along a pavement or in mm. a pub. Or, and when you're not, that energy has to go somewhere. And I think it, sometimes it just sort of goes inward and stuff. Mm. So I, I think last week was a low point. But various things... One thing I've discovered is a coping thing is when I wake up in the morning, I feel, oh, shit, here we are in this situation. It's a bad moment waking up and it may be for lots of people. You know, oh, God, here we go. I've got to make my day work. I've got to. So I signed up a thing called poem.org. I signed up to various things that would just arrive in my inbox every morning. Mm. Although I didn't want to get too stuck on screens first thing. But it is really lovely. So every morning I wake up at reach before I start thinking and getting sad. I reach for the phone and in comes bing a poem from a poemaday.org. And it can be funny, or it can be beautiful, or it could be... So immediately my brain goes to that and doesn't go into, you know, the crisis and the situation and the news and all the grim stuff. And um, so that's been lovely. And, um, and then I try and get outside, you know, into the garden. I mean, I'm, I say that knowing that lots of people haven't got gardens, but um, mm -hmm. getting under the sky is good. Yes, even yeah, exactly. Even we've got win. Uh, we've got a little terrace outside, but we've got a wi a window upstairs in that uh, where the sun comes in, um, and just being under the window where the sun comes in changes my mental state as yeah. opposed to being in a darker room. Yeah. There's just so many small things that you realise you can do when you're inside all the time that uh, that that change your mental state. And I I think I'm just becoming much more aware of what does change my mental state, what does change my emotional state what what i can do what matters to me that i what what i've lost that i didn't even know mattered yeah. to me that yeah. now is blindingly obvious that it matters to me yeah and that's it's a it's not a um i mean it, it, we have to look for silver linings in a very very bad situation and not to make a you know a, a global tragedy about my you know my my first world revelations but we're still, we, we, we're human beings, we look for silver linings. And I think, uh, and we must do, it's important that we do. And I do think this recalibration, this rebooting that we're getting to do is a silver lining. Mm. That we are looking, so we're stopping, we're going, oh, I really appreciated that now. Yeah. But I didn't, at the time I wasn't actively appreciating it, I was subconsciously appreciating it. Next time I have it, I will actively appreciate it. Yeah. So as you much say, so. we're not going to go back, we're going to go on and things and, will change. Yeah, so much. I totally agree. And I don't know, again, I'd love to know if anybody watching this feels the same, but I find that, you know, if there are friends or family that habitually I felt a bit pissed off with or haven't been in touch with work for a while because something they said or did, you know, recently pissed me off or they're generally there, what you, all that seems to have melted away. I find myself mm -hmm. wanting to be in touch with people. I don't care if sometimes I irritate them or they meet. What's important is that we are friends or we're family. Uh, so I absolutely agree. I think there's a sort of sense of emerges without even you having to think about it of what's important and what isn't. And realizing that, so much of the day, so much of your normal day in ordinary times is spent trying to prioritize stuff. So what's more important? Is it more important that I write this email or that I ring a friend or that I see, do some work or that I clean the house or and constantly trying to work out, you know, what the priorities are for any one moment in a day and what really matters. And that takes up a lot of energy. Whereas mm. now, those things seem to be clear to me, you know, like, it really doesn't matter what I look like. It really doesn't matter if I don't wash my hair. It doesn't matter what clothes I, you know, who gives a toss? So all that stuff. Having said that, you are looking really glamorous today and it's a bit annoying. Um, well, I, wasn't, I wasn't until 20 minutes ago when you rang and said, have you, you know, we're on Instagram live and I went running, screaming to the bathroom and slapped on some makeup. You, um, you well, it's, wor it's, it's worked well. You look fantastic. <laughs> um, is there anything you've, that surprised you about yourself and your reaction to this or the wider world um, is there anything, like I was saying the other day, that it surprised me that Londoners have become patient and we're all just happy to stand and queue outside a, a supermarket like we're in Soviet Russia. And I am surprised um, at my ability to stay indoors and actually enjoy a routine. Like I, I've never been a routine person. 
and now the, my routine's all I've got, so I'm really routined. Is there anything that you that has surprised you about yourself or the world? Um, that's a great question. Um, I think similarly, I am absolutely amazed at, at the patience that people have learnt, which they would not have had even a month ago. Um, that they have learned. So, which takes me to my main surprise thing, which I think is that the speed, the speed with which human beings adapt. I mean, mm -hmm. the adaptation that's taken place is phenomenal. I mean, two months ago, we wouldn't have recognized what we're talking about. You know, it's, it's, mm. but this year, you know, 2020 hasn't been going very long. If you think back to New Year and, you know, ushering in the New Year and thinking, would we have believed? No. I was on April, tour in America. We were I was on down. tour in America with huge theaters, Judy. I was, I was playing in February, I played Wellington Arena. No, and we talked about COVID on the night. It was like a crew, people on a cruise ship. It yeah. came up, it was referenced. Yes, exactly. And it was like, oh, one of those things that happen on cruise ships. And I mean, we, so, 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 I mean, if you, I mean, so the speed, so the speed with which we have accepted the situation and done what we're told and gone into this completely different kind of world, the whole world is ground to a halt. That's mm -hmm. what I can't get over. And we're now in a state where we accept that and we're dealing with it. I mean, it's kind of exhilarating to see how quickly human beings have adapted or can adapt. And maybe that's why we've survived as a species because we can adapt that quickly to a completely mm -hmm. different way of being. But it's also alarming when you think that we're constantly now obeying orders without really questioning them. And, and that we have to do to keep safe and keep each other safe and be socially responsible. But it's also quite alarming. You think at what point do we stop saying, you know, how quickly you can get a whole nation of people to obey orders. I mean, politically, that's also kind of just by scaring them. And I'm not saying we shouldn't be doing what we're told now. Of course we should, because we have to protect each other and keep safe and not be spreading this disease at all where we can. But it is just objectively interesting to see how a whole nation of people can be suddenly reduced to a, to a group of people who do what more or less all what yeah. they're told. It's I mean, fascinating to me. Who would have thought you could have achieved that? How quickly we will just, uh, absolutely, it scares me for what else governments could do to sort of say, right, you've all got to go indoors because of this. But I know that we're doing the right thing now. Yeah, but then I think how, where does this go? That now governments have proven they can do this. They can just block, like in Australia, the borders are blocked. So my sister can't get to my mum. And that's that. Like what, what if they just decided not to reopen that border? Of course they won't. They care about money more than they care about anything, even power. So they will want to open it up as soon as they can because they need money to be made again for the economy so this is not scaremongering it's just more as you say that principle of oh we will just stay inside and accept yeah. the fact that legally yeah. we're only allowed out once a day it's a bit yeah. scary no you, i mean obviously i absolutely agree what, what we're being told is exactly the right thing to do and in fact we should have been told to do this earlier but we should have uh, but 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 it is it, it is extraordinary and you think well what's going to happen How, what is the exit from this i mean that's what i'm also a little worried about where where does this exit i mean at what point can we go back i suppose i'm saying this because my other half my beloved husband is you know is is very immunocompromised and so i'm thinking when will it when will it be safe for him to go back mm -hmm. and when will we be able to walk and when will we be able to you know do my job again and work and work and but when will I know. It well both of our jobs is dependent on people we're both yeah. dependent on getting people into a room um, or we can't yeah. do our job. I mean, you can make television, but even then it's got to be a film set and that's got millions yeah. of people on it. Yeah. Um, can yeah. I ask you, have you got any routine? Is there anything that you say, um, or oh, you told us about your poetry, you do poetry in the morning. Is there anything else you do to mark your day to say, oh, time's passed or mark your week? Yeah, so I did write up a schedule, um, which I stuck on the wall in different color felt tips. Um, I have to, I find myself becoming like my own primary school teacher. <laughs> That's a great one for the t-shirt. There's a, the merch store make a t-shirt based on something the guest has said every day. And then okay. that money can go to you as an artist or you can divert it to another artist who's tr struggling to pay the rent. Oh no, so, um, I'd love that. I have become my own primary school teacher. Have you? Amazing. That t-shirt will sell very well. Um, Excellent. I hope people know what I mean, because what, it, what that means is that I'm writing yeah. more and they more will, on the It's in the context of quarantine. The T-shirt the will clearly be quarantine. That's fantastic. Hannah from the merch store, that's the one. I've become my own primary school teacher. So you've got all your coloured 
So I've got ridiculous. I sit up late at night making these charts and I've sent them to my mum. I've sent them to various family members as well. So I really am. I'm not a primary school teacher to my family, which is probably driving them nuts. They probably tear <laughs> them up. They tear them up when they arrive in the good old post, which I'm also appreciating, which is the old mm. fashioned mail. But um, no, because I write these things on the wall. I write, you know, get up. <laughs> right. I have to yeah. tell myself to do that, right? Put clothes get on. Up. By X, you know, nine. Um, so then I wrote a chart in pink, you know, nine to 11, emails and admin, 11 to one. You can, so I have tried to, you know, then I'm allowed to go out. And, so I get all the emails and all the admin done in the morning and all the fundraising or the charity stuff that I like to do. But I'm probably best at that time in the morning. And then I, um, then I supposedly go out in the garden and garden like mad, which is what I've also been doing. So we dug a big veg patch in our garden. Nice. With, um, we're growing loads and stuff and I keep digging more beds out of the lawn so there won't be much lawn left soon. Um, I think that's just because it's the only thing nearly creative that I can do at the moment is just make the garden really beautiful. So um, that's sort of two till five and then um, what do I do? So I have, got, I have got this sort of schedule but I have to, you know, I have to give myself detentions. I have to <laughs> tell <laughs> I give myself rewards and detention as for either sticking to it or breaking it. Or I haven't been um, always very good about sticking to it. Well, it, it sounds it sounds almost kinky. <laughs> <laughs> it probably it probably is. Hughes, Hughes, Hughes come into the room now and he can't. He has no idea what I'm talking about. Um, that's the best answer we've had. Is I am my own primary school teacher. Do you have any books you've been reading or any or shows you've been watching? Anything you can recommend for us if we're sort of in the void looking for something good? Uh, yeah, I haven't been watching any shows. Um, and I bet you, I've got a whole pile of things that I meant to watch. Everybody says that Tiger King is brilliant, so that's sort of first on the list. But I'm not one for really, I'm not a great one for watching stuff. Um, there's another great website. I've, I've been listening to podcasts, and there's a really great website called Culture Whisper. Mm. Do you know about that one? So you it sign sounds up Culture brilliant. Whisper, it's, it's free. And you, but you sign up to it, and it's just got really of all the stuff coming at us online, um, people sending out ideas and things to do and all that. It just seems to be one of the good ones. Um, mm. If you check it out, it just has it. In normal times, it tells you what's coming up in the arts or in, up in music or art or theatre, cinema, documentary. You know, across the arts, what's what's happening and really great interviews and things with people and what is down the line. So you often get to hear about things early. But now it's really doing a great job of sort of magazine for, for COVID-19. So just great, great articles, great things you great. might want to think about. We'll um, make a little story of that, Juliet, afterwards so people can find it. So it's Culture yeah. Whisper. Culture Whisper. Um, Culture yeah. Whisper. And the other one was Poem. Is it poem.org? It's um, Poem A Day. Poem A Day. Poem dash, uh, dash day dot org, I think it is. Poem A Day dot org. I think it comes from the States. It's an American um, website, but they're re it's fantastic poem. Some you know, some you don't. Some come from like 16th century. Some were written last week. Um, wow. They're a real, real mix. Okay. I'm gonna, we, we'll make stories of that so people can sign up for them. Is there, um, is there a piece of online feminism you'd like us to do? Uh, so every day people come to the new normal to look for one thing they can do, either amplify, donate to, uh, sign a petition for. What have you got going on at the moment that we can help you with? Oh, my goodness. Okay, well, I'm doing, I mean... Quite a lot. What I'm doing is my, you know, the usual thing, which I've been doing for like four or five years, which is the refugee stuff. So I'm working for um, both places like Young Roots, which is, I'm a patron of various charities. One is Young Roots, which is young asylum seekers and refugees between the age of about 14 and 25 years old. It's based in Croydon. It's run by a brilliant woman who is a friend of mine. And these are kids who are really, really um, at, at the sort of front line of, of adversity. I mean, they have no homes, mostly they're mostly homeless, destitute, some of them literally hungry. So trying to keep, it's, I've often gone to visit their base in Croydon and, and they're also in North London so I've been supporting Young Roots if anybody wants to check those out uh, but as a feminist if you're talking about and, and also Safe Passage which is concerned with children refugees and getting children over here who should be here so for example there are many children refugees who the British government had given the okay to to come to this country because they had a relative here who they were legally entitled to be with or because they were on the dubs list, the very mm -hmm. vulnerable kids, and they should have been here. And then COVID-19 happened, so they're stuck oh. in the refugee camp. So if anybody wants to get involved in that, which is a really, really crucial campaign, um, because these are kids and their lives mm -hmm. are, you know, 
they fled their countries because their parents thought it was safer to put them on a boat than it would be to stay at home on the land. Yeah. And well, that's when you're you're almost assured to die in your own country. You're probably going yeah. to die in your own country. But that's the only reason you leave because you think, well, we've got nothing to lose. We exactly. might as well and now go. Those kids are not only in that horrendous situation of being alone, many of them unaccompanied, but they are also, you know, they've got all this COVID-19, this terror on top of that, and they have mm -hmm. nowhere to be safe in and they certainly don't have access to running water or mm. forget hand sanitizer i mean these are conditions as we know in the in the camp so mm. safe passage is another um but the thing that i've been really concerned about from the beginning as well and i'll, I'll be i'll shut up in a minute but no this, no this is um, your space well when lockdown was announced i don't know i immediately thought well, of course we have to do that. That makes complete sense. But I suddenly thought, but what about all those families, all those marriages, all those partnership mm. situations where people are really not happy with each mm. other? You know, what's it mean when you can't go out to the pub, you can't meet your mates, you can't see, if you're a woman, you can't go out and meet your girlfriends or get out or you're not at work. Go and see your mum, that lifeline she can sort of, or your sister who kind of says, is everything okay? All of yeah. that's gone. All that, all everything, all those structures which make life just about manageable. And without those, what are people going to do? And kids are under your feet all day. And, and those children stuck in, you know, possibly violent households. Well, we now know that there has been a massive, massive problem. Mm. 16 women have lost their lives since lockdown began. Oh, 16 God. women have been killed in, in, in domestic violence. And I don't know whether the news has covered that, but I have been, you know, there is a big mm. petition going around about this to try and encourage, well, really, really urge the government to make hotels that are standing empty into women's refuges. Women's refuges, yeah, so, that, so there are places for women to go because those refugees have closed down and they are somehow made manageable in terms of you know health safety COVID-19 and all that but there have to be places women can get out to because 16 women in less than a month is, is can is you send me that petition as well and we'll we'll put a story up of that and get we'll do one where they can swipe up to uh to sign it did you see Pretty Patel announced that um if you dial 999 and then dial 55 yeah you they will know you don't have to speak because you might be dangerous to speak. That turns out to be not true. And the Home Secretary announced that publicly in a speech. It's not true. Um, what you've got to do, all the emergency services have corrected it, but we need to get the message out there. What you need to do is dial 999, wait till someone answers, listen for the cues. If when they ask you questions, if you yeah. press five five, that means I can't speak. Please send somebody, and then they will find you. But if you just go nine 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 five five and hang out, no, they they'll just think it's a, a misdial. So uh, right. I, our home secretary, who normally is so amazing, so it's surprising that she wasn't as good on this because she's so brilliant with vulnerable people. Heavy irony, in case anyone's going to write to me and say no, she isn't. Um, we'll make stories of all of those things. They were brilliant, Julia, good. and and good. all really important ones. Anything in your house you want to show us? Any pets or relics or costumes or um, yes, anything you can yes, show us Millie. inside the keyhole? I could show you my, uh, there's Hugh. Um, he's just come in from the garden. Here's my dog, Millie. Hello, Hugh. Millie. Oh, Millie. Millie. Oh, Millie makes us look better. This is Deborah. This is Deborah and Hello, everybody. Hello, Millie. Yeah. Oh. Millie. Sorry, this is pretty oh. cool. Oh, I'm, not, I'm very bad. Yeah, Millie, say hello. Sit down. Sit. Sit, Best. She is. She is Best really ever. loving. Oh well done. Oh, oh, really really That's what I want to point out. That's you. That's hello, my Hello, you. Hello, hello. Hello. What did you point out? Hugh, what did you point he out? Wants to, he wants to point out that my great love is actually my dog and not him. Oh, I see. Rather than Hugh. Yeah. There's a hierarchy. It's not anybody. It's not the children. And I must. It's not even you. It, it is the dog. So, oh, wow. Number no, we're getting on. We're getting on. <laughs> we're getting on so oh. well. It's done we are learning so much about people in their own homes in this quarantine. I mean, we've seen Madonna in the bath with her, all of her roses. Now we've seen Juliet Stevenson and we understand the true hierarchy of her love, which starts <laughs> with her dog. Can I show, I've got one more thing to show you. I'm going to show you. This is yeah. my, um, you know, I said I was being a primary school. Here is one of my yes. charts. Can you see my chart? Uh, just print, pull it down a little bit. Put the phone down a little bit. There we go. Yes, we can. Right. Daily schedule. I can see, see lunch is scheduled yeah. in. No That's phone important. between two and four. Well, I'm breaking that, obviously. Yeah, so there you go. This is, no, this is 6.30. You've not broken that. Um, filming. 6 p.m. filming and calls. There we go. Yeah. And finally, can I ask, are there any habits that you've developed now that you think, oh, I might take that through? 
Apart from the drinking habit. Apart from the drinking, is there anything that you think, actually, I might just do some more meetings by FaceTime and I might not run out to every single one anymore. Or, or actually, I might keep my, schedule, my primary school teacher schedule up. Is there anything you might do beyond this? Well, do you know what? I'm, or we I'm might do up, as a society. I'm setting, up, the thing, I'm setting up a sound studio here because mm. I, I need to work. So I need to do things like audio books, which I love to do anyway. And I need to work. I need to try and earn something. That's all I can do in the way of earning. So I'm actually, I have been really scared of technology and everything to do with, you know, anything with sound mm. systems or computer systems. I mean, I'm really, really um, a bit of a dinosaur. The thing I've really enjoyed is thinking, okay, I can't afford to be ignorant about that. And I can't afford to be scared of it. I'm going to stop mm. running away from technology, turn around, face it and learn it. It can't be that complicated. It can't be mm -hmm. such a mystery. I've got a brain. I'm going to face this. I'm going to roll up my sleeves and tackle it. And I am on the way to setting up this sound studio. I'm really getting interested in the difference between one microphone and another microphone. Nice. And um, so the feeling, I think the habit um, that I'm quite enjoying is that actually if you stop running from something that you've run from all your life, and just turn around and say, hang on, I don't need to run from this. I'm going to turn around, look at it and say, no, I think I can handle this because I have to, you know, mm -hmm. it's expedient. I absolutely have to in order to work. So, I'm, but, but actually in having to, you discover, oh, no, it's not that hard. Yeah. My head, you know? I'm quite good at this. Yeah. I, um, that's, that's absolutely what Steve says about how adaptable we are in the, in the British GQ article. He says, we're just human beings are so adaptable and we just go, OK, well, this is what we're dealing with now. We get used to it. And in fact, we find good things in it. Yeah. And, and finally, if quarantine was over now, what's the first thing you do? What are you desperate to do that you can't do in quarantine? Go and see my children and hug them. Oh, that's so lovely. Oh, but I jump in the car and go and see my kids. Oh, it's going to be my, great. And my little grandchild, my little grandson. Oh. It's going to be so I'm going to great. I'm going to cry now. I do. I do cry when I, um, yeah. I mean, listen, uh, you know, oh, everyone cries on the show. We've had so much crying. There's a montage of crying. They're safe and they're healthy and we're so privileged and lucky. Um, and I'm really proud. My daughter's working as a sort of low level nurse um, at King's Hospital in Streatham in well, Denmark Hill. And she's really at the front line. And so I'm really, really proud of what she's doing. And then the oldest one is a care worker. He looks after a, a disabled man. So I'm really proud of what they're doing. So I'm not, I'm not you know, I don't cry much, but I am I, like, like everybody in this country, like everybody watching now, I'm sure they're missing um, family and friends and so yeah that'd be mm -hmm. the first thing I would do. Julia it has been so magnificent to have you on the show it, it, it really has and you have you have made us think about this in different ways um, and you've taken us to different places I've really really loved it and your t-shirt is it's only on demand so um, so it, no will, they won't be wasted uh, but if anyone buys them uh, the money will we'll just send you the money and it'll go to you to help you with um, no. we're, we're not we're all not earning so that's the idea of it it'll go, um, straight, it'll go straight to the refugee charities it'll go straight to safe passage and young roots and probably, yeah okay so buy if you buy Juliet's t-shirt which says I'm my own primary school teacher it's gonna be very popular and then it says it says your name and it says stay at home in the new normal. If you buy Juliet's t-shirt, the profits will go to Juliet and she is going to pass the, pay that forward to uh, her amazing refugee charities. Um, tomorrow we have Sophie Duker on the show. Uh, next week we have Scarlett Curtis, uh, Yasmin Abdelmajid and various other people who I can't remember now, but are brilliant. Um, Juliet, is there anything else you'd like to plug? We'll make stories of all the, all the things you said so people can click through to them. Is there anything else you'd like to plug? Well, I'm just know about or do? So it's Young Roots is the young people's asylum seeking young people's charity young roots if you look that young up, roots like safe young passage roots, safe passage and in my local borough there's an islington crisis fund anybody who lives in islington i don't mean the posh bit of islington i mean the whole borough which is i think mm -hmm. the biggest london borough one of the biggest london boroughs and actually one of the poorest we think sort of posh bits of islington but actually across mm -hmm. the whole it's it's a so there's uh, if anybody listening lives in islington there's an islington crisis fund which if you donate to is going to get money fast to people and individuals and organizations or small businesses that really, really need it, including food banks. And so that's just a bit of local chat for anybody. Wonderful. But basically, um, yeah. Thanks so much for letting and, me. 
I love those things. Oh, it's been absolutely magnificent. And I just want to say, we're going to do, uh, I'm not sure when, but over the next couple of days, we're going to do an extra new normal uh, because with some Polish abortion activists, because Poland are using this time when women cannot come out into the street to protest to bring in even more draconian abortion laws than they've got at the moment. Last time they did this, everyone did, everyone protested yeah. and they couldn't bring it through. And this time they're using COVID. Isn't that disgusting? They're using COVID That's because people ridiculous. can't protest. And they, of course, they're finding ways. They hacked the president's Instagram account. They've done incredible things. So if we can yeah. all support them, I've been, I've been making stories and re-amplifying uh, them. We will have a special episode. We'll do something on The Guilty Feminist about it as well. Uh, so, but if everyone could support them and just say, we see you, we amplify this, you know, go, you know, Amnesty International, we do something about it. Julie and I are both yeah. Amnesty ambassadors. Yeah. So go to join Amnesty they'll direct you to the right petitions because the more the Polish government know they're being watched and they're being judged by the rest of the world, the less likely they will push this through. Um, so please, please, please uh, get behind it. Join Amnesty if you can. That's how I know Juliet through Amnesty. Is that how I know you? No, I know you through no, your daughter. No, we met, we met when we did that gig um, in... Oh, no, no, it wasn't Amnesty. It was for um, 80 years of the women's suffrage movement. Oh, and yes. we did a gig in the evening. That's right. That's but, right. Yeah, but I met your I met your daughter Rosalind, who's now yeah, brilliantly did, working for the NHS she, she as well, yeah. and she introduced yeah. us, and then Amnesty around the same time. Um, but uh, yeah, so if you could all join Amnesty in whatever country you're in, just join Amnesty, and they will direct you to things. And if you just if if you've got any money at all that you would have spent down the pub, but now you can't go down the pub, if you can donate that to Amnesty, and if you've got no money, can you can you just follow and. Uh, retweet. I don't think it costs to join Amnesty no. um, and amplify and sign the petitions because it really does work and it does change and it does matter. Thank you so much, Juliet. You are as ever a huge inspiration, and I look forward to talking you talking to you soon without an audience as well. Um, uh, it's going to be such a popular episode. Bye. Love you, love. Thanks so much. Bye. I've had such fun. Bye, bye, everybody. Good luck. Bye. Good luck. Lots of love. Bye. bye.